Hi, I'm Drew Kleber with Mitsutoy America Corporation. I'm here with Jeremy Banks. Jeremy is our National Data Management Sales Specialist. Today we're doing a little MeasureLink Q&A session. So Jeremy, one of the questions I get frequently from customers is in regards to DAQ sources. Uh, different kinds that are available, wired, wireless, grabbing data from other stations, even down to the point of what does DAQ stand for? Well, Drew, that's a great question. Um, when it comes to DAQ sources, it basically breaks down into a few different types. There's going to be USB, serial, text, and DDE. Okay. Okay. So to start out simply, uh, let's uh, take a look at this uh, USB input tool hooked okay. up to this Digimatic caliper. So this is all one piece. So you go directly from the tool. There's no interface box required for this? No. It's a, it's a one piece cable. It's a Digimatic connection on one end and it's USB on the other. So you just plug it into your gauge, making sure that you uh, pick the right port type and then you plug this into a USB uh, port on your computer. Okay, so what about drivers, any special software or anything? Nope, it's plug and play. Uh, just plug it right in, you're ready to collect data. Oh, great. Now, as far as MeasureLink's concerned, this is a USB interface. So all we do is pick that in the device settings and mm -hmm. I can show you in the software a little bit later. Okay, that'd be great. And uh, all you do is plug it in and collect data. Very good. What if a customer has multiple data sources. This seems like it would be great for a single tool like we have here, maybe two or three tools, mm -hmm. but if I have eight or 10 tools, I might run out of USB ports pretty quickly. Right, right. So if you're just doing one or two, this is a great device. But if you're mm -hmm. doing multiple inputs, then we have a, a multiplexer. Okay. So a multiplexer is simply a multiple input device. Okay. So um, we, same connection, Digimatic, but on the other end, we're gonna use a 10 pin connection to our multiplexer. Ah, okay. So the cable is actually a little different. The end that plugs into the gauge is still the same, correct, right? But yep. I'm noticing this is not the USB connection like the other cable. Right, this is a D-type cable. And actually, if you look, um, this is not a, a connection that you're going to see on a regular computer. Yes. Um, so what you do is you plug this into your multiplexer, and then on the other end of the MIG is a standard serial port. The other end of the serial port is going to plug into uh, your computer. Okay, gotcha. On older, larger standalone computers, you're going to have an RS-232 port. On this end, it's 25 pin. On the computer side, it's 9 pin. Now, on your newer computers, they're not going to have a serial port. So we have a um, 25 pin to a 9 pin adapter. Um, that's going to be USB on the other end. Now, is this any proprietary information on that, or can you teach MeasureLink to pull data from this or any other uh, RS-232 device? So we could use any third-party device. Um, it could be an older style device that only has serial output, or it could be a modern device that you want to use the serial commands, maybe you want bi-directional communication, so you want to wow. use a serial connection. Gotcha. Now inside of the MeasureLink software, it's a little more complicated. You're not just going to say that it's a USB gauge sending data. You're actually going to set what the parity, the baud rate, all of those serial settings inside of our software, which I'll show you in a couple minutes. And um, you're also going to set the string that the data format is going to be in. And this could be different for a variety of gauges. Understood. So there's a utility in the MeasureLink software that allows you to set all this. Oh, great. Yes. So all you really need is a manual and an example data string, and you're in business. Okay. So if I have a granite set up like this with multiple gauges, I could go into a, a MIG box such as this. Mm -hmm. um, what if, though, what if I have several gauges and I'm concerned about cables getting intertwined and, and things of that nature. Right, right. So, of course, with the multiplexer, everything's going to be wired. Uh, now, we do have the, the Mitotoyo U-Wave system. Okay? Uh, the Mitotoyo U-Wave system is three main components. It's a receiver, it's a transmitter, and then a little pigtail cable that connects to the gauge. Now, it's the same port that all of the other connection types we're using. So I could use with this gauge a USB input tool direct or a multiplexer with an SPC cable, or I could use the U-Wave. The connection is all the same. How many transmitters can I hook up to a single receiver? Well, this one receiver will support 100 transmitters, and Windows will support 16 receivers. So really? You, yes. So you could actually have a system with 1,600 devices in use at once. Wow. Yeah, most people don't normally do that. They'll keep it down to about 10 or 15 gauges in a system, but you have the ability to expand if you need to. Ah, oh, very good. So this is all great if we're pulling data from actual physical measuring tools. Right here I have a micrometer, here an indicator, here a caliper, mm -hmm. but not, not every tool in the lab is, has a Digimatic output port or maybe has a number on it. Maybe it's coming from another software. Maybe it's a CMM software or Vision software. Do we still have the ability to pull that data into MeasureLink so all the data is in one place? Absolutely, absolutely. If it's a uh, Mitoteo product, if it's a standard Mitoteo software, mm -hmm. then we can use a DDE connection. 
And a DD connection is a direct connection from the Cosmos, the QV Pack, the Point ah. Trace Pack software directly to MeasureLink. So they automatically handshake together. Absolutely. It's, it takes minimal setup. Um, Wonderful. Basically, you just say, I'm sending data to MeasureLink on this tolerance, and you're off and running. Okay. Now, what if somebody's made a bad decision and has a non mitotoyo CMM, for <laughs> well, example? Well, unfortunately, that happens. <laughs> um, sometimes people are using devices that uh, we don't make, like mm -hmm. tensile testers or something like that, or maybe mm -hmm. uh, digital scales or a spectrometer. So um, most measuring devices have a way to digitally output the data. Um, so they'll put a text file or an output file, an ASCII mm -hmm. file. This file will have the data in a repeatable format. So we have a function called import templates. And what we can do is set up a uh, template inside of the MeasureLink software that would then parse the data coming through the text file. So every time the data is output from the gauge, mm -hmm. we'll import it into MeasureLink. So how does that work since no two machines will output the same format of file? Well, there's a utility inside of MeasureLink that allows us to build the import template. Oh, okay. So, and you can build as many templates as you need. Uh, generally gotcha. speaking though, a certain software will output the same every time. Mm -hmm. You may have more features or a different part number, but the format's the same. So your tensile tester could output all the same format, even if you have a hundred different part numbers but your digital scale might output a different format, but it's gonna be the same for all 100 part numbers. Great. So you'd build two templates, one for the tester, one for the scale. Perfect. Well, Jeremy, thank you for your time. This has been a great overview of all these individual products. If I wanna learn more on specific uh, ways of pulling data in, what can I do? Well, in the future, we're gonna make uh, these tooltip videos, and we're gonna share these uh, out on YouTube. Great. And, or you know any other video service. And uh, I'm gonna make individual tooltip videos for collecting data from um, USB devices, from serial devices, mm -hmm. and from virtual comp ports. Great, so anybody that wants to know more can just go to YouTube and search up the Mitotoyo America channel and find from there? Absolutely. Very good. Well, thank you for your time today. I sure do appreciate it. And thank you for your time. If you have any other questions, please uh, feel free to find more videos on our YouTube channel or visit us online at www.mitsotoyo.com.